Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party, the Deputy Secretary of Defense, Robert O. Work, and National Chair, Mr. Paul Mock, with the employer support of the Guard and Reserve. Remain standing for the presentation of colors, the singing of our national anthem by Captain Christian Walker, and the invoca invocation delivered by Chaplain David Gretz. Let us pray. God of the universe, we have come together today to honor businesses who have gone above and beyond their legal responsibilities to provide support to their employees who are a part of our nation's National Guard and Reserve. This support is paramount in order for these citizen military members to be able to be a part of the defense of this nation. Without their support, the task of being a dual role civilian employee and Guard and Reserve member would be nearly impossible. Those of us who serve in this role are appreciative of your support, and the nation honors you today for this dedication and commitment to your employees. Holy Scripture speaks of the relationship between a nation and her military and the New Testament story of a centurion a military leader, and his love of the nation he lived in. May we as a nation 
continue to show love and support to our military in ceremonies and events such as today in order that our military members know they are appreciated. Thank you for the wonderful example of these businesses we honor today. Continue to bless them, our Guard and Reserve members, and this great nation we are privileged to be a part of. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. We have, as our Master of Ceremonies, a nationally recognized newscaster who spent two decades at CNN, where he won several Emmy Awards for his coverage of the 2000 presidential election, the Oklahoma City bombing, and the September 11th terrorist attacks. His distinguished career continues here in Washington, D.C., where he is an Emmy Award-winning news anchor for WJLA Channel 7. Please welcome a great friend of the Secretary of Defense Employer Support Freedom Award Program, Mr. Leon Harris. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Don't, don't applaud me. I'm the least applause-worthy guy that's going to be on this stage, that's for sure. Thank you so much. It is an honor to be with you here this afternoon. Thank you for inviting me here, and welcome to the 20th Annual Secretary of Defense Employer Support Freedom Award Ceremony. It is such an honor to be here with you this afternoon. I'm a really big fan of what ESGR is all about. For the past 43 years, uh, employer support of the Guard and Reserve, better known as ESGR, uh, has offered a culture in, in which all employers support and value the employment and the military service of members of the National Guard and Reserve. And today is a great day for us to take advantage of the opportunity to honor them. This year, the Freedom Award Program received nearly 3,000 nominations, 2,960 to be exact, uh, for the Department of Defense's highest honor for employers of Guard and Reserve Service members. Now, the employers are here today, and they have gone above and beyond to make sure that service member employees and their families are taken care of while they perform their military duties at home and abroad as well. Now, when our service members return from military service, these employers have helped ease the transition back into their civilian lives and jobs. The Secretary of Defense Employer Support Freedom Award is a way for all of us to pay tribute to the sacrifices and the support of these employers. Now, we would also like to take a moment to thank all the distinguished guests who are attending today. We appreciate your participation here as well. The award being presented here uh, to our 15 honorees is the highest recognition given by the Department of Defense to employers for outstanding support of their employees serving in the Guard and Reserve. Honoring our recipients this year is our keynote speaker, and would you please now welcome him, Deputy Secretary Robert O. Work. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's a great Friday afternoon in August in Washington, D.C. Thank you, Leon, for that introduction. I'd like to welcome you all here on behalf of Secretary Carter, who I am lucky enough to represent today, uh, to recognize this year's Freedom Award recipients for their impressive support of our National Guard and Reserve men and women and their families. Now, for more than two centuries now, from that momentous day in 1775, when the militia stood proud on Lexington Green. The devoted professionals who serve in our guard and reserves have defended this nation both at home and abroad. The willingness of these patriotic citizens to leave their homes, their jobs, their families, their children, their loved ones, when called upon to defend their fellow Americans and to rush to their aid when distressed at home has been a defining tradition of this country literally from the beginning and birth of our republic. Now, over the past, past 14 years of war, the skilled professionals who serve in our Guard and Reserve had made extraordinary contributions. And I would like to thank all of those in this audience who have served their nation and for all of those who you represent. And these extraordinary contributions that they have provided could not have been made without the extraordinary support from an extraordinary bunch of civilians and citizens, business leaders, and employers who have really allowed them to not really worry about coming back to a job or anything like that. Which is why President Obama has de designated this week 
the National Employer Support of the Garden Reserve Week, a week where we all join together with our guardsmen and reservists to thank their employers who bring the valuable, uh, who know the valuable service, excuse me, who know what the value of service brings to the workplace and to those whose support is vital to the readiness and strength of what I consider to be, and I think everybody would consider to be, the greatest fighting force in the world today. The President said this in his proclamation. As Commander in Chief, I am grateful to those employers and business leaders who go above and beyond to ease the burden of those who serve, and I encourage all Americans to join in their efforts. Today, guided by this sentiment, we're going to honor 15 businesses and government organizations with the 2015 Secretary of Defense Freedom Award, which I think you all know is the highest honor the department gives to employers who support those who serve in the Guard and Reserve. Now, one of the great things about this award is it is the Guard and Reserve personnel themselves who nominate those who receive this award. And so, therefore, I think it's even more special. And as Leon said, over the past year, we've had 2,960 employer nominations from the Guardsmen and Reserves from around the country, which just indicates the respect and gratitude that our men and women who serve in the Guard and Reserve have for the employers that they work for. Now, the 15 that we honor here today represent the very best in employer support to our Guardsmen and Reservists. They all share one thing in common, regardless of how big they are or what they do, an outstanding support for their Guard and Reserve employees. Now, please know that your country, for all of the 15 here, and again, there are other awardees, but these are the ones that have been given the highest award. Please know that your country and all of the Department of Defense employees are grateful for the support you provide our servicemen and women and their families. As Secretary Carter said, has said, these outstanding employers have not only earned this award, they have earned our nation's gratitude. Their, accomplish are a vital, their accomplishments are a vital piece of our national defense and a high standard toward which employers of Guard and Reserve members should strive. And I couldn't agree more with what the Secretary said. Now what Secretary Carter and I value the most is the capability and quality of the men and women who serve this department. The active, the guard, the reserve, the civilians, and the contractors. Like the employers here today, we're focused on making sure that they can do what they need to do to accomplish their jobs, and we honor their service, and we want to take care of them. But we need and appreciate all the help we can get. This is an enormous enterprise. And the men and women of the Guard and Reserve make up almost half of today's total military force, and they would simply not be able to accomplish their mission without the support and encouragement of their employers, their communities, and their families. So we share these citizen warriors with all of you, their civilian employers, who provide such important support and enable them to serve our country when called upon. And what I would like to encourage more employers around the country to recognize this reality and follow the leadership of today's honorees. Now I'm going to share you just three examples. There are 15 that I could have picked from, but let me just give you an example of three. The town of Hingham in Massachusetts provides a smartphone to all deployed employees to permit, fa permit FaceTime communications with their families. Additionally, the town has a long-standing policy of welcoming home each and every member and their family Residents townwide are urged to come out of their homes along an extended homecoming route to wave flags and cheer. The College of the Ozarks continues to extend full benefits, including full salary and retirement for the duration of the service members' deployments. They also show their appreciation by sending their service members entire units care packages. And remarkably, Faculty and students volunteered both time and money to help a spouse with a home renovation surprise before the service members return. BP America Incorporated continuously emails and participates in Skype calls with deployed service members. One of their employees 
noted that this month he had 40 co-workers and supervisors alone on one Skype chat. They wanted to check in and see how he was doing. Additionally, supervisors and co-workers regularly reached out to spouses and sent items like fruit bowls or flowers throughout the deployment. Now these are just three examples, but I'm just blown away by these three examples and there are many, many other examples that I could have given you this afternoon. This just gives you a taste for what these employers do for our men and women who serve in the Guard and Reserve. So together, we're here to celebrate and recognize the exceptional support received from the employer community and commend those organizations that provide this exceptional support. So again, on behalf of Secretary Carter, congratulations to you all, and thank you so much for what you do. We greatly appreciate everything that you have done for our Guard and Reservists, their families, and the departments. And as we salute these 15 companies and organizations, we also recognize all of the Guardsmen and Reservists and their families that they support, and we thank you for your service to your country and the sacrifices that you all make. Thank you all, God bless, and I look forward to meeting each of the awardees in just a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Deputy Secretary. At this time, we want to honor the 15 employers who have provided this exceptional support to their Guard and Reserve members throughout the years, with, uh, whether they're employees or training locally or responding to national disasters or being globally deployed. They value and support their call to duty. So if I could have uh, Chairman Mock join uh, Deputy uh, Secretary. There he is. Oh, you sneaked in on me. <laughs> what are you, Special Forces or something? You see that? <laughs> I didn't know the chairman was a ninja. <laughs> and with that, let's now get to our first group. The first group we honor today is the small business category. Small companies can be uniquely challenged by deployments. Uh, the companies here today with us, though, have notably sacrificed to support their service members and our nation as well in the process. Our small employer recipients are College of the Ozarks, nominated by Army National Guard Lieutenant Colonel James Schreffler. The college extended full benefits, including full salary for the duration of his deployments. Faculty and students volunteered both their time and money to conduct renovations for his return. And during the 2014 commencement, the school awarded him a professional development award based largely on his military career. Accepting today on behalf of College of the Ozarks is President Jerry Davis. Dr. Joe A. Jackson, MD, PLLC, nominated by Army National Guard Specialist Christopher Goff. Dr. Jackson's office paid his salary for the duration of his military duty. The office proactively checked with his family to see if they needed any support while he was away serving. And when the family's house caught fire, Dr. Jackson and his office manager made sure that Specialist Goff and his family were in another home by the end of that day. Accepting today on behalf of his office is Dr. Joe A. Jackson. God bless you, man. Neil Dimut, Frank McFall, Trexler, McCabe, and Hudson, APLC. Nominated by Navy Reservist Lieutenant Commander Robert Olson. Neil Dimot provides the difference between his regular pay and military pay and continues all benefits for military service of 12 months or longer. The firm also places strong hiring preferences toward members of the Guard and Reserve. 
Neil Diamond also holds an annual Wounded Warrior event with the San Diego Padres, which hosts veterans from the Balboa Medical Center. Accepting today on behalf of Neil Diamond is Mr. Hugh McCabe. And now our large business awards. Guard and reserve employees can sometimes kind of get lost around the thousands of civilian employees in large organizations. However, the large employers that we recognize today have found some innovative ways to individually support their service employer members. The Black Hills Corporation, nominated by Army National Guard Sergeant Corey Virtue. Black Hills gave Sergeant Virtue a yearly bonus even though he wasn't there to meet the goals required for it. The company provided support to his pregnant wife during his deployment with meals and gift cards, among other items, and the co-workers there helped with yard work and child care. Black Hills also donated seven computers to help his entire unit stay in touch with their families as well. Accepting today, on behalf of Black Hills Corporation, is President and CEO David Embry. BP America Incorporation, nominated by Army National Guard Captain Justin Kelso. BP America sponsored a radio campaign in Texas that encouraged employers to hire citizen warriors. BP President John Minje broadcasted a, a live Skype chat with a deployed service member in, in front of the entire organization, thanked him for his selfless service. Since 2011, BP has run a veterans business resource group and has developed an energy-specific fast-track online career tool to help veterans transition into energy sector jobs when they return. Accepting today on behalf of BP America is Chairman and President John Minjay. Cardinal Health, nominated by Army National Guard Major Christopher Butsky. The company created a Veterans and Military Advocates Employee Resource Group, which provides information for service members about veterans-related issues. Cardinal Health also created a Veterans Leadership and Career Development Program to assist vets who are seeking jobs inside or outside of the company. Additionally, Cardinal Health has raised $1.6 million for the Wounded Warrior Project since 2009. Accepting on behalf of Cardinal Health today is John Jockman. <laughs> Cigna, nominated by Air National Guard Staff Sergeant Emily Morell. In 2014, Cigna sponsored a military family providing them with toys, clothing, household items, and over $600 in gift cards. The company also sponsored a soldier who had been homeless, providing him with complete furniture for an apartment, kitchen, and cleaning items as well, and clothing along with $500 in gift cards. The company hired 100 military personnel in 2014, and they say they look forward to building on that and hiring even more in 2015. Accepting today on behalf of Cigna is CEO, David Cordani. <laughs> CVS Health, nominated by Air National Guard Major Alice Pagarini. CVS provides differential pay and benefits to service members on military duty for up to 12 months. The company has distributed 7,400 statements of support to its retail stores and has developed a pilot program that enrolls and trains veterans to become licensed pharmacy technicians. Accepting on behalf of CVS Health is David Casey. Devon Energy Corporation, nominated by Air National Guard Staff Sergeant Adam Ward. 
Devon Energy filled four positions with guard and reserve candidates as part of, a part of their profile of a veteran in GI Jobs magazine. Devon set a goal of making 7.5% of their new hires veterans and reserve component troops. And in 2014, they didn't just hit that. They exceeded it by hitting 9%. The company hosted 10 military appreciation events in 2014 where they provided job seekers with resume critiques. And accepting today, on behalf of Devon Energy, is CEO David Hager. <laughs> Snell and Wilmer LLP, nominated by Marine Corps Reserve Colonel Richard Erickson. The law firm provides pro bono legal services to income-qualified income guardsmen, reservists, and veterans on a day-to-day -day basis. For its military employees, the firm has a military pay differential policy, which in most cases costs the firm over $50,000 per deployed attorney. Snell and Wilmer currently employs over 35 staff members who serve in the Guard or Reserve or are veterans. Accepting on behalf of Snell and Wilmer is managing partner Matthew Feeney. The Walt Disney Company, nominated by Air National Guard Lieutenant Colonel Vincent Pagliuca. Disney provides pay differential for periods of service greater than 12 months, along with all health care and insurance benefits. Disney runs Heroes Work Here, an initiative to hire, train, and support guardsmen. The company seeks to hire at least 1,000 more by 2015. The company also offers life care support, which provides resources and consultation for deploying guards and reservists. Accepting today on behalf of the Walt Disney Company is Chief Diversity Officer Paul Richardson. Well, congratulations and thank you so much to these outstanding large employers who are doing so much for their Guard, Reserve, and Veteran employees and who truly, really understand the, the critical need to help put them in place and give them the skills that they're going to need to return to the civilian workplace. Now, we turn now to our public sector awards. Today's four public sector honorees fight fires and manage the operations of cities and towns as their daily jobs. Our public sector honorees are also dedicated to supporting their Guard and Reserve employees. Our first honoree is the Boise Fire Department, nominated by Marine Corps Reserve Major Nathan Ingram. Now this is really something. The department has an appointed military liaison whose duties include assisting military members and their families. Uh, the department takes, uh, sends care packages to their deployed employees and they also provide free IT support and repair to their family members and they continue to invite the families to out to department activities and help out with household problems. And in fact, in the case of one person who was deployed, they did all of that. Uh, in addition to that, they also took care of that person's home and then upon his return, they gave him all of his pay increases for the entire period that he was gone. He was gone for eight years. They stepped up to the plate big time there in Boise. And for that, we thank you so much for your service to the, our servicemen and women and accepting on their behalf of the Boise Fire Department, Fire Chief Dennis Doan. The City of Glendale, Arizona, nominated by Navy Reserve Petty Officer Second Class Patrick Valenzuela. The City of Glendale offers up to 329 hours of paid military leave per year, nearly double what the state law mandates, by the way. The city boasts a robust reintegration program for returning service members where each meets with VA representatives and receives briefs about the Glendale Military Support Program and the Employee Assistance Program as well. Finally, the city provides veterans hiring preference specifically for their police and their fire departments. Accepting on behalf of the city of Glendale, Arizona, is Mayor Jerry Wires. <laughs> the 
The city of Shawnee, Kansas, nominated by Army Reserve Sergeant First Class Douglas Sims. The city continues medical, dental, and vision benefits for its deployed employees, paying the full premium. Fire department employees maintain snow removal and lawn maintenance during deployments to ease the stresses on the service member's family in their absence. The city also offers a reintegration program to help ease employees back into the workplace after their deployment is over. Today, accepting on behalf of the city of Shawnee, Kansas, is Mayor Michelle Distler. The town of Hingham, Massachusetts, nominated by Navy Reserve Chief Petty Officer Keith German. The town of Hingham offer, provides differential pay and continues the benefits for the duration of an employee's deployment. The town offices there close to bid deploying uh, members farewell and they welcome them home and the police and the fire departments come together and provide an escort from the town line all the way to their residence. The town's veteran council also reimburses all shipping costs for spouses' packages that are sent to deployed employees. Accepting today on behalf of the town of Hingham, Massachusetts, is chairman of the board of selectmen, Paul Healy. And with that, at this time, would all members of the Guard and Reserve please stand? Please stand and accept our appreciation and gratitude for your service. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Absolutely. Uh, those who made nominations, if any of you are here, would you please stand? Do we have any of the nominators here? <laughs> I love this. <laughs> thank you so much for your service, and, and thank you for helping us to, to recognize the employers who make all of this possible and help us, help us keep America what it is today. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Uh, now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you, the Deputy Secretary Work and Chairman Mock, thank you so much as well for your contribution today. As they leave, one more round of applause for all of our award recipients this afternoon. Let's give them all a round of applause. That's awesome. <laughs> um, All right, now as much fun as that was, this may be the most fun I have today. This is an introduction I, I can't wait to make, because the show's not over yet, folks. We have the pleasure today of being visited by a man who's been a longtime friend of the military. He is a music artist who first hit the country scene uh, in 96 with a self-titled debut album, which hit number six on the country charts. Two years later, he earned the Academy of Country Music Awards Top New Male Vocalist Award, and since then, He's had four albums hit the country top 10 in sales, 20 singles in the country charts. And believe me, his support and love for the military runs deep. It is in his blood. It is in his DNA. He is the son of a Vietnam vet. He has been a supporter of the military by traveling overseas with USO tours and trips to both Afghanistan and Iraq. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a pleasure to introduce to you and have you please welcome to the stage country music artist Mark Wills. Thank you, Leon. Thank you all very much. We're uh, honored to be out here. Please welcome uh, Mr. Johnny Myers right here on acoustic guitar with me. <laughs> throughout, our, uh, throughout our times, we've been able to travel around to visit military installations and go to Iraq, Afghanistan, Kuwait, uh, many places. More than a dozen times, and uh, one of our one of the things that we have worked on the last few years is uh, helping out our, our warriors with uh, post-traumatic stress, TBI, stuff like that. We're going to play you a song that's on, the, uh, on my latest record, and uh, we'll play
hopefully you guys will, will like this one. This is a song that, uh, that we put on there specifically for our warriors. It's called Crazy Being Home. He almost forgot how to drive over here While he tried to survive a year over there Some young punk just left him off And ran him off of the road He just turned 22 last week In the back of a striker somewhere in the heat. He never thought he'd live to be this old It's crazy being home plane feels like yesterday they were waving flags and signs with his name they said they were proud of what he'd done if they only knew what he had become the girl in love she swore that she'd wait but he came home to a cold empty place had a burger today got a new cell phone it's crazy being home The stars all look the same And he still answers to his name It's okay, something just ain't right It's right to fight for what you love But his young eyes have seen too much Till you've been where he's been You wouldn't understand I hope you never have to mind He got the call, he's back on a plane To where he belongs, it might sound insane But his brothers are there, they can't fight this alone So they dropped him right there in the blood red sand His best friend is locked and loaded in his hands And his sergeant he yells, boys it's time to go And he goes, it's crazy being home Crazy being home. Lord, it's crazy being home. It's crazy being home. Ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause for Mark Wills. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Award recipients, please join us on stage for a group photo with Deputy Secretary Mark Work and Mr. Mock.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the departure of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the 20th Annual Secretary of Defense Employer Support Freedom Award Ceremony. Thank you all for coming. Please join us outside the auditorium for a reception. <laughs>